Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. Uh, did everyone get enough coffee to go through some slides today? Uh, all right, we're good. So today we're going to talk about how we auto-remediate or auto-heal OpenStack clouds. Uh, my name is Mikita Gumenko. I'm an infrastructure engineer at Mirantis. I'm a part of professional services department, uh, and I'm focused on operations and site reliability. Uh, since I'm part of professional services, my presentation will be based on our customer engagement with uh, Semantic Cloud Platform engineering team. So let's review our agenda. Um, we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about OpenStack environment at Symantec. We're going to talk how we monitor it. Um, we're going to discuss how we actually get into the auto-remediation approach. Uh, of course, we'll talk about what OpenStack use cases we came up with. And at the, at the end, I'll show a little screencast on one of the auto-remediation action we implemented in our environment. So. Uh, uh, to, to give you some context, here's how a semantic environment looks like. Uh, semantic has um, the hybrid cloud. It's basically OpenStack plus AWS. OpenStack infrastructure consists of four regions across the globe, uh, hundreds of racks, and thousands, thousands of hypervisors. Uh, AWS infrastructure is also rapidly growing. We already uh, above the tens of thousands of cores, but today let's focus on OpenStack. Uh, monitoring, is the essential, oops. monitoring is the essential part of uh, every environment. So uh, we have a bunch of monitoring tools, and we, have, uh, we were struggling with wiring them all together. So our main monitoring tool is Zabbix. We also have, have things like Prometheus, some legacy Nagios, Nagios installations. We use PagerDuty for pages. Uh, Volta is our logging, monitoring, and metering platform. Under the hood is just uh, Logstash, Kafka, Elasticsearch, all the cool stuff, Grafana, Kibana. Uh, synthetic transactions are the functional tests against our environments, basically to boot up a VM, create a floating IP, and see how the whole cloud is doing. And the health dashboards are just a structured view on, on how the cloud is doing. Uh, it has some, uh, the, it has the main metrics uh, of how cloud operating. Uh, so since our main tool is Avix now, let's discuss it a bit more. We have few thousands of monitor hosts in it, hundreds of thousands of items. We monitor things like uh, processes, services, resources, APIs, uh, performance and utilization metrics. Alerts go uh, to the emails, Slack, and Jira. As I said, we have integration with PagerDuty for uh, pages and on-call shift rotation. And recently, we added TextStorm to run our auto-remediation or self-healing workflows. All right, so the boring part is over. Uh, let's discuss how we actually get into the auto-remediation. Uh, it was only a few of us operating this relatively, relatively big OpenStack cloud. And uh, we were, uh, in addition to our feature deliverables, like adding new data centers, adding new services, doing the upgrades, we also were on call all the time, which basically included uh, uh, reacting to alerts, fixed outages, uh, create outage tickets, sending proper notification and stuff. Uh, and at uh, some point, we, we discovered that uh, these activities uh, hurt our productivity in other areas. So we decided to... Uh, identify operational patterns uh, in our day-to-day -day operations so we basically can uh, automate around them. Um, so here's how incident response looked like before. Uh, basically, uh, based on alert severity, uh, either pager duty notification will be triggered, pager duty will basically call you, and you will need to fix the outage right away for other type of issue, just email or ticket will be created, so you can work on them during the business hours. Uh, and all of this required a lot of time, so uh, we decided to try auto-remediation. And uh, what is auto-remediation? Auto-remediation is an approach to automation that responds to events with actions to prevent, help fix, or fix the issues. 
The, the easiest example of auto remediation is the, when one of the services uh, filled up the disk space with the logs. Uh, why do we need to wait or wake up engineers to fix that if the simple script can basically wipe all the logs and just and, and let the engineer know in the morning what, uh, like what he needs to fix, like some log rotation or whatever. Uh, furthermore, even driven automation is an approach of executing action workflows uh, based on operational events like alerts. So uh, basically, Zabbix will trigger uh, low disk space alert, and on, based on that trigger, uh, action will be um, triggered. And uh, this action is basically run the script to wipe the logs, right? With our, if we're talking about our example, all the big all the big players uh, also do the auto remediation. The famous uh, Facebook F bar is already sa saving 17,000 hours a day in operations. It's like massive number. Uh, LinkedIn has its nurse. The, the name represents itself. It basically nurses in the environment. Uh, Netflix, Google, GitHub, PayPal, they all uh, do the same with the same approach. So here's how we updated our workflow. Um, so if, if the problem is well known, we just auto remediated things like cleaning up the logs, service restarts. Um, it just, we, we don't need to wait for the engineer to fix it, especially during the night. Um, if, the pro if the problem is unknown or auto remediation did not fix the, the problem, uh, we fall back to our default workflow. But automation now will um, collect as much debugging information as possible and will supply on-call engineer with it. So he can basically resolve uh, outages faster. And uh, that's, uh, we call it like assisted or facilitated troubleshooting. Uh, so when we think of what to auto-remediate, I, I like to refer to this picture. It's called uh, leftover, leftover principle for automation. The idea is that the task you cannot assign to the machine is basically left to, to the humans to carry out. So if the problem is frequent and it's easy automatable, we should do it right away. Things like service restarts, like VM reboots. Um, it's like low-hanging fruit for this type of issue. Things that happen rarely, but it's also, is also easy automatable, we should also do it at some point. For rare and difficult cases, I suggest to create um, like uh, assisted troubleshooting tools or some helpful tools to, that will help you uh, resolve outage quicker. Uh, so auto remediation has its profits. Uh, you basic, basically will uh, decrease your MT, MTTR, which stands for mean time to repair. You will resolve your outages quicker or even prevent them using automation. Uh, you will improve your SLAs, of course. Uh, the engineer productivity will increase because you won't deal with outages that much anymore. Uh, the number of notification and pages will go down. And of course, the sleeping time will improve. And trust me, as a father of little baby, it's like the crucial one for me personally. Uh, uh, some things to keep in mind. The bigger scale you have, the bigger um, profit you will gain. Uh, for example, you might think like, I have this one RabbitMQ cluster which breaks once a year. Why do I ever want to auto-remediate it or automate its fixing? But Mirantis, for example, deploys uh, OpenStack for hundreds of customers with hundreds of RabbitMQ clusters. So at a bigger scale, it, it pays over time. Uh, be deliberate in detecting the exact issue of outage. Uh, you want to run your automation scripts against the problem they are actually solving. You don't want to restart like MySQL replication if just single MySQL process die. You just can restart that process, right? Uh, do not over-automate. Leave things like uh, database corruptions or network outages to, to humans. They're still better than the scripts well, for the most part. Uh, set your maintenance windows properly. Uh, this one actually got a story behind. Uh, right after we implemented the uh, Auto remediation of the Nova compute services in all our data centers. One of our engineers was doing the upgrade, which required Nova compute to be stopped. And uh, since he set the, the wrong maintenance period in Zabbix, Zabbix was still firing the events. So when he stopped uh, Nova compute in, in the whole data center, uh, it all came back up in a, like after a couple of minutes. And after a couple more tries with the same outcome, he basically realized there's something going wrong. So 
be careful not to run actions when they're not needed. Uh, of course, every alert and action, uh, every alert matters. Uh, every alert should be follow up with the either ticket, auto remediation actions, or permanent fix. And as a reminder, permanent fix is still better if you if you got one. Um, so while looking for the open source solution for auto remediation, we found this TechStorm, which was used uh, by Netflix at the same time. And TechStorm is the open source event driven auto remediation framework. We use it because it ties together our monitoring solutions on the, other, on the one hand and infrastructure on the other hand. Um, it's also the powerful framework to create auto remediation actions. Uh, it has basically Mistral under the hood, Mistral workflow engine, the OpenStack stuff. Um, it contains uh, predefined building blocks called packs. It has integrations with uh, Jira, Slack, Nagios, uh, Sensu, you name it. And it's easily extendable, so you can write your own uh, plugins or sensors or rules. Uh, it's just it's just code and some YAML. Uh, here's the architecture of Stackstorm. As you can see, it has sensors to listen for the events. It has rules engine to basically classify the event, and action runners or workflow to run to run actions based on the classified event. And as I said before, you can easily de develop your own sensor plugins, action plugins. It's very easy. So he here's how it fi fits our infrastructure. Uh, basically, all the monitoring system we have at the top trigger the events to the stack, and Stackstorm listens for them. And based on the event, it, it uh, either triggers action to the infrastructure, like restart the service, reboot a VM, or something else or triggers notification of some sort to engineers like escalations or just notifications. Uh, open stack use cases. So um, this auto remediation approach can be applied to any system. And uh, open stack as well, since open stack has many moving parts. And let's admit it, like the shit breaks. Uh, they, demons die. Logs fill up with the, uh, logs fill up the disk. Uh, RabbitMQ cluster can fall apart. Um, MySQL uh, can get a split brain due to network outage. So um, uh, that's here's the list of the use cases we came up with that can be auto remediated. So um, the basic operations is very easy. They can actually be done like in few hours of uh, coding. Uh, what I want to focus is more and more advanced operations. Um, so uh, assisted troubleshooting, as I uh, this, uh, explained before, is when you get an alert and it, it's already supplied with some debugging information. So f imagine you, you, you have your uh, keystone alert that already that, uh, increased the, the error rate metric. So you want to debug what's, what's going on. And together with the alert, you, you can have uh, in the same email information about uh, some logs, information about load balancer status checks, information, for example, for related services like memcache. Uh, it also can have things like links to Grafana, Kibana dashboards for easier, uh, for easier identification. And uh, we also can hook up chat ops to that. So we can trigger commands to the chat ops, which basically will um, also help us uh, to, to get some information about wh what's going on in the environment. So that's handy. Uh, uh, RabbitMQ and MySQL are like the core components of every OpenStack installation, and they also can be auto-remediated. For example, recently we had a problem with the third-party component of OpenStack, which was um, bombarding our uh, RabbitMQ with messages that were never consumed. And it was a bug in software, so we didn't have like a permanent fix. So we implemented auto remediation action to basically wipe all the messages from that queue above some limit. Uh, you can also easily rebuild uh, RabbitMQ nodes or MySQL nodes if you need, because uh, almost everyone now uses uh, virtualized control plane, so replacing the node is not is not like hard and uh, it easily can be done using automation. For my SQL part, uh, uh, the split brain recovery process, for example, for Galera cluster is 
can, consists of three steps. And uh, why do we need to run it manually, right? We can like do it automatically. Uh, replication recovery process crash is also very easy to auto remediate. Um, capacity planning. So we are constantly struggling with the amount of hypervisors we have to for our customers to deploy VMs on top of it. So here's how, from my point of view, good capacity planning looks like. You have your capacity forecast, your hardware ordered. Um, after some time, hardware received, you deploy it in the, in the cluster, and basically your users won't notice anything. So it, 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 will, it will feel like cloudy way of doing things. But it, uh, on, in almost every company I saw, even Amazon has this issue, capacity planning looks like this. Basically, users start to report issues with the capacity that like, they cannot boot uh, VMs. Engineers in panic try to squeeze something, and after a long, long wait, they add some, uh, some, some hypervisors to the capacity. And as a reminder, I'm talking about bare metals now. So here's how we uh, resolve this issue for our environment. Uh, we create auto-remediation actions to basically auto-scale in our hypervisor pool. We put uh, the cap capacity analyzer, which basically retrieves the data from OpenStack and counts how many flavors of how many VMs of each flavor we can boot in the current environment, and exports uh, as this analyzer exports this capacity metrics to the Zabbix. And Zabbix, if Zabbix det detects the low capacity issue, it triggers the event to the Stackstorm, and Stackstorm uh, goes to the Ironic we use, and like provisions the couple more hypervisors, and once it's done, it also uses uh, deployment tool to basically roll, roll out the Nova to it. So, like, this whole process takes maybe like half an hour, so, uh, I mean, it's very, very convenient and easy. Uh, as I told me uh, before, we use uh, synthetic transactions, which are basically functional tests against uh, our OpenStack cloud, like VM provisioning, image creation, floating IP. Uh, it checks like HTTP codes. It checks um, things like uh, ping SSH VM. So we, may, we, may, we, we will be sure that our cloud is operating fine. And if the problem occurs, the synthetic transaction will trigger the event to the Stackstorm. And Stackstorm will basically uh, will uh, provide assisted troubleshooting to debug those issues, like gathering the logs, as I said, um, checking the load balancers, providing some graphs. Um, and uh, the last case is um, hardware failure prediction. So we, we got a bunch of hardware health metrics, like uh, disk health or smart D counters, ECC error detection, uh, monitor CPU, we monitor network interfaces. So if you detect, detect one of these problems, uh, Zabbix basically triggers the event to uh, Stackstorm to do the VM ev evacuation. And uh, what Stackstorm does is just uh, does live migration to the, from the bad hypervisor to the good hypervisor. So, so this bad hypervisor can be fixed, like, for example, uh, RAM replaced or network link is fixed. Uh, so we won't lose our VMs in case of hardware failure. And I, bas I actually created a screencast to show you of this uh, implemented action. So um, since uh, the VM migration takes a lot of time, I decided just to screencast it and uh, uh, fast forward it. So uh, we, pe we picked one of our, our production hypervisors and decided to do like some sabotage on it, uh, basically by removing one of the bonding interfaces by shutting it down. So uh, first, let's see uh, if the hypervisor has any VMs. Uh, so as, as you can see, it, it has four VMs now. Let's now uh, SSH to the host itself and just check if they are actually running there. Uh, 
we'll just basically run virtual list to see if VMs are there. Uh, as you can see, four, still four VMs. Now let's uh, check the Zabbix to see if it's all green. It's basically the host group that uh, has this uh, compute in it. It's all green now. Stackstorm, uh, on the other hand, has the rule to react on the hardware issue that was triggered by Zabbix. So let's see how it looks like. As you can see here, uh, we have uh, action called evacuate VMs. And uh, the cr criteria for it is the when uh, Zabbix has the hardware hardware that issue in its uh, trigger body name. Let's see how the action look like. The action is basically Mistral workflow to to run some actions on the environment. This action has things like uh, create a ticket, run the evacuate VMs itself, notify Slack, and notify uh, email. So um, let's do some bad thing on the, on the server. The server has uh, the bonding uh, with two interfaces in it. Let's see that both of them are up. As you can see, two interfaces both are up. And let's bring one of the interfaces down. Let's now check uh, Zabbix to see if the problem appears there. And of course, I post fast forwarded this. So, uh, actually, uh, just a side note: we have a grace uh, grace period for this type of uh, this type of event, so we just won't um, have the issue that VMs will be evacuated in because of like simple network flap. So, as you can see, uh, we have the issue here in Zabbix. And it already uh, triggered some events to the to the Stackstorm. So let's see what's going on in the Stackstorm side. We are listing their execu latest uh, execution list. As you can see, there is action running right now. It calls evacuate VMs. Let's, uh, let's see what's inside this section, basically, what tasks are running. <coughs> uh, as you can see, some of the tasks are already finished, like Slack notifi notification, uh, Jira ticket creation, and uh, uh, current action is evacuating VMs. And, and as I said, uh, VM live migration takes like a lot of time, five plus minutes, depending on, on VM size. So um, let's see if we got... Uh, Let's see if we got the Slack notification. Here's the Slack. I blurred some sensitive data. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the problem was reported, and already some action tr actions triggered. Uh, we basically removed the hypervisor from the Nova pool, so no new VMs will be. Uh, spinned up on it, just because we don't want to kill the hypervisor with VMs on it. And uh, another action w was initiated is the VM migration. And we do it one by one just to not overload the existing uh, link. Now let's see if uh, VMs is uh, really migrating. We run the novel list, and as you see, one VMs is in the status of uh, migration. And um, let's see if Nova service list status is correct. Uh, as you can see, the hypervisor was disabled, and the disabled reason is basically hardware issues. Um, now we need just to wait uh, until all of the VMs will be migrated. We'll basically monitor the Slack to wait until all the VMs will be migrated. 
as I said, I've like fast forwarded here. As you can see, one of the VMs already was migrated, triggered another migration, another VM was migrated, triggered another migration. So basically now all of the VMs should be migrated because no new action was triggered. Let's uh, now see if uh, the host still has those VMs. As you can see, the host is empty now. Let's see on the hypervisor itself, it's also empty. So all the uh, VMs from this bad hypervisor was migrated to the uh, good one. So we now can either fix this server or decommission it if it's like has some bad hardware issues. Uh, now let's see what Stackstorm did. As you can see in the right corner there, I already received an email uh, from Stackstorm with the detailed information of what it actually done. But let's see first uh, what Stackstorm has in its execution list. So as you can see, it uh, executed uh, four actions here. As I discussed, the Slack notification, Jira ticket creation, it also succeeded with the evacuation of VMs, and it also created uh, email notification. So let's see our email. As you can see, it's like automatically generated email from Stackstorm. Uh, it has the Jira ticket uh, link in it. It also states the problem. It uh, states the action that was initiated. In our case, it's VM live migration. And the result of the, live, of the VM migration script basically saying that uh, those VMs were migrated to, to the other hypervisor. And as a, final, uh, as a final step, just let's check if the Jira ticket was actually created. As you can see, the ticket was created. It states the problem. It was assigned to me. I just don't want to bother our SRE team with this test case. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we basically avoided uh, the problems with the uh, VM due to hardware failure. And this process can be, dial can be done while you're sleeping at night. And in the morning, you will just get the ticket to resolve and to, I mean, to check and fix the problem. And you'll get notification of what auto remediation action was uh, doing whole, uh, with this problem. All right. Uh, that's, that's it what I got for today. Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, there is a microphone. So there is like a recording. So please use the microphone. <coughs> Some of the stuff, it sounded a bit dangerous, and you mentioned those over-automation aspects, and, and as I hear from you, it's all about like night. So in the night, you can use fairly aggressive actions, but then in the morning, you kind of handle it properly, let's say like this. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to RabbitMQ and MySQL in particular, do you have actually published and uh, kind of um, in the GitHub, it's available maybe for Stackstorm, those al automated algorithms, or can you describe in plain words, like typically what you just removed, Amnesia D DB, or that you really have a solid MySQL troubleshooting guide that will allow fairly aggressive actions done in automated fashion? Okay. Uh, that's a great question. So. Uh, humans are very, like, they have, like, very uh, safe, safe kind of nature. They all, all, always, like, afraid of the, like, new things and things that can, like, damage them, basically. So um, it's hard to trust automation, especially if you do, do not, like, control it, basically, at night. Uh, and it's, it, I, I think it's, like, a more of the cultural change. But as I said previously, you need to be sure that you're first you deliberate with your why, uh, what automation type, what uh, outage type you have. So you basically will be sure that the script you're running is uh, solving this particular problem. So uh, for example, for RabbitMQ, we don't have uh, it published yet. 
but uh, we have uh, auto-remediation action when we wipe like the amnesia partition in, in case we can, cannot start the RabbitMQ, so it basically, uh, we basically re-add re this node to the cluster. And of course, you, 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 uh, first, like first couple of, uh, I don't know, months, you need to control this, this thing. So uh, Stackstorm now has uh, uh, this thing that allows you to breakpoint the automation. So you basically, uh, the, the event is triggered, and it gives you the, the option, do you want me to run this? And like it, it's not done in the automated fashion. So it asks you, do you want me to run this? And if, if you see like it's, it basically can fix your problem and it will do everything right, uh, you just say okay and run it. And after some time you just uh, used to it and you, you're sure that your scripts are working and you identify your problem properly and that's how you fix it. Uh, and uh, another thing with MySQL, for example, uh, we had like a couple of split brain, uh, split brain uh, problems, and uh, the Galera documentation has like three steps for uh, uh, split brain recovery: just stop, uh, stop the MySQL clusters, identify the latest, and start uh, them back from, from from this node, right? And I mean, it's very very easy to automate. It's uh, but. Uh, once again, I want to mention that we need to be sure that this is like the particular problem we are dealing with, so we run this automation action against it. Hey, good morning. morning. I just have a question about the auto-scaling. Usually mm -hmm. people talk about auto-scaling and you explain how to add more node which trigger some kind of alert. Yes. What about to decreasing the number of nodes? Are yes, we, so we are. That <laughs> yeah, that's a nice question. Yeah, we um, we didn't implement it yet, but it's uh, fairly easy. If we, um, we if we have ironic, we can just do like nova nova delete of the hosts, but uh, we need to identify the hosts that um, don't have any VMs, right? And we, uh, we need to make sure that no VMs will be spin up on it during the, our decrease process. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we were thinking about it, but we not implemented it yet. But, I'm, I mean, I think it's fairly easy to architect those things. Any other questions? All right, thanks. Thanks, everybody.